I've printed all of my parts from white cut G. It's not recommended to use PLA as it can melt when it contact with cotton. My parts are not looking perfect since I didn't use any layer fan during print. You should definitely use a layer fan, but if you don't have one then should don't worry about it. We'll be using M3 threaded inserts for all the plastic parts. All of the inserts need to be installed with soldering iron. Don't use the same soldering iron for plastic and soldering, you will easily damage it. The process is really easy. You put the insert on top of the hole and slowly push it inside with soldering iron. Don't use too much force, take it slow. You should now have the inserts properly installed. I've repeated the process for all of the printed parts. This one right here took the most inserts. For the layer fan you will need 4020 blower fan. I'm using 24 volts since that's my main voltage. In order for it to fit inside the case you will need to take off the top cover. After taking the top cover off, you can simply push it inside the plastic enclosure. You might have to cut off the screw holes on top of the fan. This will ensure that all the plastic parts will fit nicely. As you can see, cover fits properly now. For the main cotton fan, I will be using 4010 eggshell fan. This one is 24 volt as well. The first thing I'm gonna do is clip off the connector. The connector makes it very hard to push the cable inside the plastic case. I'm going to clip off the cable holder as well, but you don't have to do it. Make sure to push the fan all the way in. Now push the cable through the hole on the main body. After that you can screw both plastic parts shut. I will be using M3 14mm torque screws for the top plate. If your screws won't fit properly then you can simply insert your screwdriver into the hole. This will make holes a bit bigger. Remember to screw all the screws just slightly at first. You'll tighten them all later.
After fixing all four screws, it's time to route the cables. I've changed the design so that both cables will come out of the other way. But first I need to screw both pieces from the other side. I'm using a bit longer M3 screws, both are about 25mm. Both screws will ensure that the fan stays in correct spot. With both screws in place, it's now time to take a little break and install the content plate. I've removed all of the original potent parts, I'm also using my E3D46 from previous build. I still have my potent fan attached so that I won't forget which wires go where. This is the hotted plate, it's almost completely flat apart from the end stop pusher. I've designed it for the original Ender 3, but I suspect that it might work for V2. I'm using one PC screw and one Torx screw, same as before. PC screw is a bit difficult to describe, you get a lot of them with any PC case. I found it to be best one for this size, it won't interfere with other plastic parts. Second one is just a regular M3 Torx, you can use different one as well. Here I've got the Bowden module. I've already installed the inserts of screen, it was the same way as before. First thing I'm gonna do is push the Bowden tube through their Bowden module. Now that the Bowden module is installed, it's time to combine both pieces together. Remember to properly route the phone cables, both should exit on the side. And now just cover them with Bowden module. While holding Bowden module, properly align the hotline. And now screw both pieces together with M3 Torx screws. After tightening the screws, everything holds properly. Make sure that your hot end cables face the right way, it's very important. It was designed so that the hot end cables face the same way as fan cables. After aligning the hot end, install the hot end clamp. This will make sure that the hot end stays in place and won't rotate while printing. This part uses the same Torx screws as before.
And now all of the plastic parts are assembled together. I still need to connect the fans though. It's always a good idea to use shrink tubes for your cables. Put the shrink tube on your cable first. And now join both cables together. Do the same for the second one. I've soldered both cables with my soldering iron for better connection. Now just slide the shrink tubes over the connection. I'm using my small blowtorch. I'm using my small blowtorch to shrink the tube. You should definitely use the hot air if you have one hose. It's very important not to burn the cable. Also, not to burn yourself, by the way. And that's how you shrink the tubes. It seems that I've got a lot of excessive care, that's okay. Now it's time to zip some ties. It can be a pretty tight fit, but it really depends on the size of your zip tie. You can help yourself by using pliers. Put the zip ties all the way, this will make them less visible later. And now you can use the zip ties to hold the cables close to the plastic case. I've used one additional zip tie at the top, since my cables were way too long. And now I can assemble the afterburner onto the other fringe frame. Hot end plate uses only 4 torque screws to connect with the hot end assembly. Push all 4 screws inside the plate first. the haunted assembly onto the plate. Tighten each screw slowly. 
don't over tighten them since they screw them or break the plastic. And now you have assembled whole fender after burner. One last thing to do is just push the bolt and tube back into the extruder. Once you've did that, you're ready to print. Thanks for watching everyone, it was definitely a long video for me. I've had to pause all my projects in order to finish this one. It's definitely a cool upgrade and I love it so far, my printing experience definitely improved.